I'm already off to a rough start. I'm kind of tired. I've started running, so like my whole body feels like flat tire. Hi peeps, welcome back to my little green corner. My name is Kaisa and this is Mental Health Naps. And today we're talking about a word that we all know, common, very non-negotiable on how to say it. It's easy to pronounce, so I love it. Not that I don't love the other words that I bring up, but like, <laughs> it's nice to have a break from those words because sometimes I misspell them, sometimes I say them wrong and then I can't remember. Anyway, regardless, today we're talking about the word name. So I did do a little bit of research on the history behind the word name, an old English word that comes from Nama, N-A-M-A, -A, which comes from Numen, N-O-M-E-N, from Latin. That's where it comes from. I know we all kind of understand what the definition for name is, but I thought it'd be interesting for once to actually look in a dictionary and kind of get a feel for what it, what it actually means, like officially. A word of phrase that constitutes the distinctive designation of a person or thing. A word of symbol used in logic to designate an entity. We all have names. There is something that someone can call us that will get us our attention right? Mine is Kaisa. Maybe yours is, you know, not Kaisa probably, but we all have our own names. Some are more common, some are more rare, unusual, some are hard to pronounce. That's my camp. And others are, you know, everybody knows how to say it. Everybody knows what to say when they see the letters spelled out. Love that. Really wish I knew what that felt like. Regardless, we all have a name and we all have names for things. We all have a way of communicating what the actual heck we're talking about. In the past, I've talked a lot about like Larry. Larry is the name that I gave my depression. To kind of do a little synopsis in case you haven't watched that one yet, it's Cockalorum. I think it's episode 10. In that episode, I described a lot about what it felt like to deal with Larry or what it feels like when depression is, is coming. And I'm just like, oh, better hold on because it's gonna be a rocky ride. The reason why I gave depression a name is because everybody's depression, though it kind of has the same feel, it, it does different things to us. It does have some similar side effects or symptoms. You know, maybe your depression makes you do these things, whereas mine does this other thing. So they're kind of uniquely catered to us, depending on what we pick on in our own minds, depending on what the actual cause of our depression is. You know, for me, it's sleep apnea, but for you, maybe your depression comes from something else. So the thing with depression, the thing with Larry, is that because he is a medical condition, he is always around. He's always lurking in this fine head of mine. He has a chair at every table next to me. He is just, he's just there. Unfortunately, he's one of my life companions. Not one that I chose. Clearly not. When I was at my sickest, I recognized that the stronger that Larry was, the weaker I was. I wasn't able to say, hey, yo, go sit back there at the at the lonely table in the corner. No, he was sitting at the head of the table, so to speak. My whole life revolved around Larry, around depression. It was all about how can I get through the day dealing with this dork. Larry, he's always there. He's tucking me in at night. He's in my dreams. He's the first thing that I see when I wake up and it's almost impossible to escape his deathly big bear hugs. It's just one of those things that it's, I have depression and I have to live with that. But at the end of the day, I don't have to let that control me. I can let that just be something that is a part of me, but it is not me. This depression does not go under the name of Kaisa. It goes under the name of Larry. As I worked on peeling back the layers of getting better and feeling better and being able to do things to kind of keep Larry to the curb as much as I could, so to speak, I found that it was much easier to control all of these situations where Larry usually took a front seat. When I first started struggling with depression, I didn't know what it was. I was very much a naysayer when I was starting to feel really, really bad. I always kind of knew that depression ran in my family, but I didn't really believe in what it was. I was just like, oh, well, you can snap out of it. You can feel happy. Happy. Oh no, I know. I've, I recognize karma is a thing and karma got me and ha 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 
haha -ha, jokes on me. Here we go, talking about depression. When I started having my bouts with depression, I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was me. I thought it was just me being negative, being really tired and exhausted. And I'd get these really massive migraines to the point where I couldn't handle light. I had to go and lay in a dark room sometimes, or I couldn't handle really loud sounds because it was just so sharp pain in my head. I started really pulling back from life. I was not really into developing relationships with anyone. I wasn't really into taking care of myself because I was exhausted. Like I didn't have any energy to like get up and exercise and exercise is kind of an important part of your mental health. So it was just like sinking further and further and further because I didn't have the energy to do any of these things that we need to in order to take care of ourselves in order to feel better. Here I was being sabotaged by Larry and I didn't even know it was Larry yet. The more I, you know, went to the doctors and the therapist and we talked about what depression was, I recognized, oh, so you mean I'm dealing with something I never thought actually really existed nor took seriously. Okay, yes, I gotta mend and change my outlook and change my ways. Great, perfect, where do I sign up? And as I started to get to know depression and I started to get to know Larry, I started to realize just how much of my life he was taking over slowly but surely. Piece by piece, he was taking over what I like to do because when you have depression, you only really feel up to doing your hobbies or what you like to do. I always tell my people in my circle, like, you know there's something wrong with me if I don't want to go get Panda. Panda Express. Crazy for their orange chicken or if I don't feel like antiquing or sewing or something, you know there, there's something going on in my head that I'm really struggling with. It was like Larry was slowly erasing little parts of me. Lost interest in a lot of things, couldn't really handle being in big groups. I remember when I would try and go to my church, for example, just sitting in the huge con congregation was like a big no-no. After like 10, 15 minutes, I had had to leave because I started getting tremors. My headaches would start coming. And then I recognized like at school, I started failing quite honestly. I couldn't make my brain hold on to the information so that I could study what I wanted to study and move into a career that I wanted to move into. I kept going to the therapist and I kept talking to him and he was just like, depression has a way of slowly isolating you from what you love and essentially who you are. And it was like Larry was building Building this nice white picket fence around me, keeping me enclosed and just having the time of his life taking over everything about me. And that's the real crime when it comes to depression is it erases who you are and you know it, but you feel very helpless and you can't do anything to combat it necessarily. You have to get help. It does take a lot of time and it does take a lot of energy to get back on track of what your life should be. I know for me, what helped was I did do medication for a bit that kind of corralled everything so I could kind of understand what was going on. Other things that I would do is I would just honestly just force myself to do things that were easy that would pump in the endorphins. Now granted on the other side I learned I had sleep apnea so you know getting that taken care of helped me be able to combat Larry as well but it didn't change the fact that Larry had been running rampant for years in my head. There was a lot of rewiring that I would have to do in my mind to be able to learn how to put the shields up or learn how to dissemble whatever kind of fence Larry was building next to put me in or cage whatnot. I had to learn how to build my own cages for Larry, not let the other way around happen. I'm not gonna lie, it was really hard and it did take a few years. A few years of day by day biting the freaking thing off. I don't say this to, to deter you from like, oh my gosh, depression is so hard. It is so hard to to heal from. It is so hard to live with. But at the end of the day, you just have to ask yourself, well, which hard am I going to pick? You have to pick your hard. You know, it's like if you're trying to get in shape, it's hard to be in shape, but it's also hard to be out of shape because you're eating more or you're not eating very healthy. If you're eating a lot of restaurant or fast food, that costs money. If you're 
running or you're very active, then that takes a lot of time that some people just don't have. You know, you got to pick your battles. The same thing applies to depression. You have to pick your heart. Am I going to put in all this energy and effort into getting better and then learn different coping skills that is going to take management and it's going to make certain habits be a certain way that maybe other people won't support? Or am I just going to sit in my chair and just be miserable day in and day out and miss out on everything? Both are really difficult. So at the end of the day, you just have to ask yourself, what is my heart? And for me with Larry, like when I was the most broken down, I just recognized that as slowly as I was dissolving, Larry was very much slowly emerging from the shadows. This is honestly where the whole idea goes of you feel like an empty shell because that's what you are essentially. When the depression is at its absolute peak, it's in its prime, there's nothing going on. Nobody can live like that. That is not what life is about. I hope that you recognize, you know, if you suffer from depression, name the stupid bugger and then learn to fight it because that is the hard thing to do. But I tell you what, I would rather do that hard thing than do the other hard thing of actually just letting depression be its hunky-dory little self, right? We don't call depression by our first name. I do not say depression is Kaisa and Kaisa is not depression. That is not what my name means. My name reflects what I look like, my personality, what I've been through, a whole story. It reflects a history and it reflects a future. I'm Kaisa. Lisa. I am not depression. I'm not Larry. It represents so much more than depression. Yes, I have depression. Yes, I have named him Larry and he's like a little devil in my head, like a little shadow, literally the little devil that sits on my shoulder. He doesn't reflect any of that. The depression doesn't mean any of those things that my name does. So why would I let my depression define my name? Because I'm not my depression. That's basically all I have to say about the word name today. I hope that you've come up with a name for your depression if you struggle with depression. If you don't struggle from depression, first off, you're very lucky. Second off, chances are that you do know someone who suffers from depression, someone very close to you. And if you don't, for some reason, there's a chance that you could meet somebody in the future who suffers from depression. I hope that by talking about this, we're all more tolerant of somebody who has depression because depression can make us say and do some things that we simply don't mean, that don't reflect who we are as people. I know a lot of times things that I've said or things that I've done and I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so not me. That was Larry, like under my face. It just took over. But that's what it means with mental illness is you see the person's face, but what's coming out of their mouth isn't them. So I hope with depression, we all learn to be just kind and loving with one another and recognize that some of us may be struggling with it. Some of us are more open to talk about depression. Some of us are not. I know for the longest time for me, I was like, that's my secret. I am, I have depression. I want nobody to know because people will look at me different and that's okay. You can be trying to get healthy and not announce it to the world unlike myself, just recognize that depression is a thing. It's real. And it is not the person who has it. Their name, your name has so many meanings. And that is what makes you you. And it makes you unique. Anyway, that really is the last thing that I have to say about this word name. Such a good one. I mean, I love names, don't you? So good. I hope you have a wonderful day. And until the next one, have a nice nap.